Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Edward Orton, and I'm going to be presenting the digital infrastructure analysis for the ARC. Um, so you all know that, obviously, internet connectivity is essential to part participate in society, also to participate in the digital economy. Um, therefore, we need new evidence in order to, to inform how to deploy this particular infrastructure. So for this particular analysis of the ARC, we looked at three particular questions. So how will mobile data growth um, evolve under a 5G future? Um, which 5G strategies are most efficient at deploying the capacity that we need? And finally, what's the total coverage cost of delivering full fiber to the premises across the ARC region? Uh, so given we're at the ICE, I'm assuming most people aren't radio engineers, so I just want to take a little um, bit of time just to explain a little bit of background about how you expand a wireless network. Um, and there's three particular ways. So you can improve uh, the efficiency, so you can upgrade from 4G to 5G. And the way you can think about this is, you know, on a road, if you're able to reduce the car spacing from 100 meters down to 50 meters, but you imagine that the vehicles are actually data packets. That's a good way to understand this. Um, you can also add new spectrum, which in that analogy essentially is like adding a new lane on an existing highway. Um, or you can also build more sites, which is like increasing the road density in an area so you're more, it's, it's more efficient to get to where you, you, you want to go and it relieves those pinch points within the existing system. So within that uh, frame, there's four main strategies that we test. Um, it's not an optimal strategy, but not investing anything is a strategy, uh, so that's the first one that we look at. Um, secondly, we look at spectrum integration, which is basically taking the existing brownfield sites that you're all familiar with, uh, so the macro cell sites there on the top right-hand corners, the big towers, and you replace the grey antennas on the top with multi-carrier base stations, which means you can add the new 5G spectrum bands to them. They already have fibre links, um, it's fairly easy to reuse them. Small cells are much smaller than those macro cells, so they can serve up to about 35 kilometers at the top there, but the small cells can serve about 1,000 meters down to about 200 meters there for very high capacity in a very small area. But they're greenfield, we don't have them already, we have to deploy them, deploy them and therefore there's issues in doing that, particularly cost. And then finally what we do is we look at a strategy where we deploy all of the spectrum on the brownfield sites and then we go to a greenfield strategy. Um, so how do we actually do that? Well, we take a, a model which uses um, uh, expectations about future demand growth, the population scenarios, the existing sites data and building information, and then we calculate the existing demand in each area in each time step. And then we use a statistical engineering model to basically calculate the capacity in that area and we relate the two. So we're able to then deploy new assets using the strategies which we've outlined and the results that we get can be quantified in terms of the capacity, the coverage and the cost. So how will data growth um, evolve? And really the key thing that's driving this is that we're now moving to unlimited mobile data packages. Um, and that basically means that people just don't have to consider moving data anymore. So if you look at the number of calls that exploded in use when that happened with voice calling, we're going to see something very similar here. So we're gonna be moving from about five gigabytes per user per month on average now to about 20 gigabytes per user per month per average by the end of the period that we looked at here, which was 2020 to 2030. So it's a huge increase, even in the baseline case, and it's driven predominantly by video. People using video on demand, wherever they are, they want access to it. So actually, when you look at the population growth for the scenarios that have already been shown, they have a very small impact on the overall demand. Most of the demand, as you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, is being driven by uh, the increase in, in video consumption. Um, so in the baseline case, it's about one gigabit per second across the air interface during the busiest hour of the day at the moment in the arc, and we're expecting it to go up to about three gigabits per second. So it's going to increase about three times in the baseline um, scenario that we put forward. So how do the different strategies perform? And on this slide, we want to look at the top row first. And these graphs basically show the minimum guaranteed speed that you would get 90% of the time. And currently, for 90% of the time, that's about, about 10 meg using a 4G connection in the arc. But it's actually going to increase, by our estimates, under the spectrum integration scenario to about 60 meg per second. And then that contrasts quite considerably with small cells, where potentially it could increase up to about 120 meg per second per user. But what's important about these graphs is we need to look at the third one down, which looks at the total cost for actually deploying this infrastructure. Um, and actually reusing the existing brownfield sites in a spectrum integration approach costs for a single operator carrying 25% of traffic, about 160 million pounds, 
Whereas in the small cell case, it's about three times that. I mean, you're looking about half a billion pounds to deploy small cells um, uh, in the time horizon that we looked at uh, across the arc. So this is very clear um, as to the cost implications. And actually, if we look at the spectrum and small cell strategy where we let the model first deploy spectrum and only deploy small cells if it needs them, only in a very small number of cases are small cells actually required. So the macro cells are able to basically meet demand. And then just finally, well, what's the total cost of delivering this uh, across the arc for fiber to the premises? Um, well, we looked at two particular scenarios. One was brownfield, so we reuse all existing infrastructure, and one was greenfield, where we basically have to build everything from new. Um, uh, in the greenfield case, um, the baseline was coming in at about uh, two billion pounds for a full FTTP across the arc. Um, but actually, if we reuse a lot of that existing infrastructure, then that can be reduced down to about 1.6 billion. <laughs> So what are the findings of this? Um, well, essentially, we should be looking at, at taking a macro cell for a uh, first approach. And that means that, that the existing infrastructure is sufficient immediately for meeting demand. Um, and that means we should only be deploying small cells in those dense urban locations where demand might be really high. Um, this is to keep costs low and, and to ensure that we can, we can um, um, balance out uh, consumer prices with infrastructure investment. Um, I think what's really important is that we need to put digital in planning somewhere. Um, generally, it's just left, and people don't really want to consider it um, because they've got bigger fish to fry. And I think that this is really bad because HS1 basically didn't have communications considered at all in its planning. So you can spend £6,000 a year for a season ticket, but not get an internet connection or a basic mobile phone connection on that line, which I think is absolutely terrible. And even now, it doesn't seem that digital's really factoring into the planning process at all. Um, this doesn't happen in other countries. China's high-speed railway has very, very good connectivity. It's very integrated into the building of the network. You can get a reliable internet connection connection on it. So if I can really press this issue today, it's that we really need to be making sure that we put this at the center of our planning processes. Because if you use a rail line and you can't connect to the internet, this is a serious productivity issue. And this, this country has a lot of productivity issues currently. And internet connectivity is just one of them. And finally, we have a lot of publicly owned street furniture that we've all paid for. Local authorities can open up this street furniture. It can expedite the rollout of connectivity. Um, and also, there's new revenue opportunities for local authorities in doing this. Um, thank you very much for your time. And if you'd like to know more about the technical information, then please come and see me at the afternoon session. Thank you.